Hello everyone and welcome to USASC Engineering. I am so excited to show you guys all about uh, the cool things that we're doing here at USASC Engineering. So I'm gonna start by sharing my screen so that you guys can see my presentation. All right, there we go. So I am so excited to hopefully see you guys as our future USASC engineers. But before we jump right into it, I have a little trivia game uh, that you can play along with while I go through the slides. So this is just a way for me to kind of uh, see who my audience is because uh, we're living in a different virtual world. So if you have your phones ready, uh, you can just scan this QR code with your phone um, and you'll be brought into the trivia game that will have uh, questions throughout the presentation and some, a few little things. So if you can just scan that QR code, or if you don't have your phone with you, uh, you can also just type that um, uh, address into the the uh, the side. Um, oh, it's actually sorry, that's uh, engineer SK um, is the the code there. So I'll just give a few more moments uh, for everyone to get into the game, and I'll also just put the link in the chat. All right, so it looks like I have a few people joined. So we're gonna jump right in and get started. So what I'm gonna be talking to you guys about today is our re-engineered first year. Uh, so on your phones there, if you could just type in where you're uh, tuning in from, I'm curious to hear where everyone is from. So I'm sure you've heard lots about our re-engineered first year and maybe you uh, joined us because you heard about the title that said no finals and common breaks, which doesn't sound like an engineering program at all. All right, so it looks like we have some students from Swift Current and Regina. Um, I'm tuning in from Saskatoon. Uh, I actually live really close to our USAS campus. So our re-engineered first year, 
uh, these are some of the key highlights, and I'm going to dig into these a little bit more throughout the presentation. All right, so it looks like we have uh, Alberta, Moose Jaw, Swift Current, Lloyd Minister. All right, so lots of places you guys are coming from. Um, so I'm curious also to hear which of these five things are you most excited to hear about, or what do you find the most exciting? Uh, and I can uh, tell you a little bit more about these things throughout the presentation, but. Basically, the whole re-engineer program has been designed to help make uh, help make you more successful, help your wellness, and Evan. The whole purpose is to help your learning, to help you be um, a better engineer, uh, and to learn the things you need to know. So it looks like the most exciting thing to you guys was no finals, uh, followed by the hands-on learning and modular courses. All right, so. This program is the only program of its type in Canada. You won't find anything else like this anywhere else. What we've really tried to do is we've tried to redesign it for student success. Uh, so we've tried to make the whole program more balanced, um, a lot more hands-on learning, um, much more thorough. So first of all, one of the key things that we've introduced is modular courses. So what these are are very short, focused intensive courses. So you'll maybe have one course that um, is only a few weeks long uh, and you'll have another course that maybe is the whole semester. So yeah, it looks like a lot of you guys don't exactly know what a modular course is. Uh, and a few of you have even taken a modular course. So that's great to see. Um, so I have a, a slide here that'll show you what your schedule will look like. So this is a normal semester. Uh, if other programs, um, across campus and many other universities, this is what your engineering will, program will look like. So you have your five or six classes. They're all completely independent of each other. They're all in equal weight. Um, so that means they'll be taking up the same amount of hours in your day and then your final exams. But this is what a re-engineered schedule looks like, which is pretty crazy. So you can see that, for example, uh, the communications course here is a really short course. It doesn't take up too much time. Uh, this computer science course is taking up a lot of your time in September, um, but it's really short. So the students that are taking the re-engineered course right now, they're all done computer science. Uh, so it's a very different schedule, but it helps you um, learn a lot more different topics that are important for being an engineer. Um, and then we also have the half speed option. So if that schedule looked a little overwhelming and you maybe you want to do sports at the same time or work, uh, or just take a lighter course load to make sure that you succeed. Um, the green courses are what you would take in the half speed option. So then that would be spreading out your um, first year program across two different years. So also with these modular courses, we've been able to introduce this thing called just-in-time learning. And so this is means that your courses weave together. So for example, um, the theories and concepts that students learn in computer science, they're gonna, use all of that knowledge directly in electrical circuits. And at the same time, um, the different theories um, and formulas that they're using in math, you'll be shown exactly how those are real, used in real life situations in your electrical circuits course. So it's a great way, I know as math is probably the hardest one that it seems like all the things you're learning are very abstract, but it's a way to show you um, how important the things you're learning in your first year are to other courses. So we also have a first year teaching team. So this is a dedicated staff that are just for you guys. Uh, we've been calling them the dream team. Uh, so it's our best professors uh, that are teaching the first year program. And what they're trying to do uh, by having this coordinated first year program is trying to make sure that everything is coordinated. So your assignments line up, uh, there's not all your exams happening on the same day um, and that your curriculum all weaves together. So I'm asking you uh, on your phones, what did you find the most challenging about high school or what you do find the most challenging? Um, and it looks like, yeah, assignments happening all at the same time. Uh, right now is kind of the, the midterm season in university. Uh, and so that's what a lot of students are feeling right now uh, in a traditional program. Courses pulling you in a million directions on fair exam schedule, yeah. So those are all try things that we're trying to avoid with this program. So another thing that we've uh, done with the re program is try to make a predictable schedule for you guys. And the reason why that's so helpful is that uh, you have more time to join clubs. Uh, like this one here is the aero design team and they actually build that airplane and they compete with it. 
Uh, and I have a, a bunch of different uh, student groups that we have on camp on engineering. It's not all of them, just a few. I'm curious to see what you would find the most interesting. Um, there's also common breaks, so you can study uh, with your friends. You can um, go to the gym. Um, and then the day ends at a common time. Uh, so you can work, uh, you can uh, join a student club. There's lots of different things you can do. And there's also common uh, study breaks and tutorials. Uh, so you can get help with your homework um, or just spend a little bit of time socializing with friends. So it looks like the most popular student group is Husky Formula Racing. They are a super cool team that builds a race car and they compete with it. Uh, USASC Aero Design Team, that's the one with photo. Uh, it looks like Saskatoon Engineering Student Society. Great. So yeah, it looks like lots of interest in the different student clubs. And I highly recommend join, joining one of them if you're able to. So we also have a brand new curriculum with the first year program. And what we've tried to do done with the curriculum is try to make it a lot more relevant. Um, so I know, especially with maths and sciences, they can feel like they're uh, not very tangible or they're not very useful in the real world. So we're trying to show you how those, the things you're learning in first year are really important for becoming a professional engineer. So uh, one of the things we've tried to do with that is help your transition from high school into engineering because that's what a lot of students find to be um, really tricky sometimes. So we have summer top ups, which are a really great way that if maybe you took math, uh, maybe a while ago, maybe you took it in grade 11 was the last time you took it or the first semester, uh, you'll be freshened up and ready to go when you start. Uh, we're going to teach you life and study skills, mental health and wellness, peer teaching, indigenous people's history, uh, review of science and research and engineering. So lots of different ways to help uh, get you started in engineering and help set you up for success. So we've also tried to focus more on the engineering majors. So in a lot of programs, you're expected to just know exactly what you want to do for the rest of your life. And how are you supposed to know what you want to do if you've never experienced them? So what we have uh, is a more focus on the engineering majors. So one of the things we have um, is instead of final exams, uh, students will get to do a one day discipline immersion in the different uh, majors that they're interested in. And um, we also have a major bridge course in, instead of the spring final exams, that once you choose your major, uh, you can focus in it and do a really cool project in it. So I asked you on your phones, uh, do you know which major you would choose? And yeah, it looks like 71% of you guys say there's a couple majors you'd want to try. So that's great that you can experience those majors and narrow it down to exactly what suits um, your skills and your interests the best. And it looks like 14% of you know exactly what you want to do. And 13% say, help, can I experience all of the majors? <laughs> so you can see here, back to the schedule, in December is the major experience. So you'll get to do a full day in the different majors that you're interested in and experience them. And then you get to do a really cool hands-on uh, kind of lab experience um, and meet some of the upper year professors that uh, teach those courses to help you decide. So here's a list of all the different majors that we offer. Uh, and you can see under each of them, uh, there's different uh, spe specializations within each of the majors. We have chemical engineering, civil, computer, electrical, engineering physics, environmental, geological, and mechanical engineering. Uh, and then at, here at the bottom, there's a few different certificates. So we have a certificate in professional communication. Uh, so that's maybe if you want to uh, be a leader someday, those are a really great way to learn um, communication and persuasion and presenting um, and then we also have a certificate in technological innovation. Uh, and this is really great if you want to maybe be a business owner someday. Uh, so you get to take uh, classes from the Edwards School of Business with this. All right. And another really cool thing about first year is that we do a design and bridge course. So that's in your spring term. Uh, so you can see right here is when you do the design and bridge course. And this is help to help transition you into your second year. Um, so you get to do a design project in the major that you choose. All right, so we've also tried to make students more employable after their first year. So there's a lot of different uh, skills that students learn, uh, like programming, CPR, WMIS, CAD, project management. Um, and as you can see on your phones, the next thing I want to talk about is our co-op internship program. So... 
uh, students can go on co-op after their uh, second year. You can go on four, eight, 12 or 16 month work term options. And the answer to the trivia question is actually $50,000 is the average wage. So that's the average. Some students actually make um, a little bit more than that, um, which actually no one guessed that. So I'm happy to surprise you guys with that. Uh, so the nice thing about this program is it's very, very flexible. So you can do uh, different uh, term options. You can start in different times and you can actually stack them. So you could, uh, for example, you could go in the summer after your first, after your second year, and you could do another year long work term um, if you wanted to. So it's a great way to get even more experience on your resume um, and make some really awesome money to help pay off those student loans. So another thing uh, that we have in our first year is we've refocused to help students succeed. And with that, we've introduced this thing called competency-based assessment. Uh, so this is our brand new grading system that isn't really used in uh, any programs. So true or false, students get chances to try again. All right, and 100% of you guys uh, guess that that is true. And yes, that is one of the fundamental things with competency-based assessment is that you actually get opportunities to try again. So what the heck is competency-based assessment? The easiest way to explain, it, to explain it is that we are testing your skills, not your memorization. So I have another question, true or false? Research has shown that short-term memorization is the best way to assess learning. And that is false. Uh, I'm sure you guys have experienced, um, you know, you cram the night before and then the next day you have no clue what you learned <laughs> after you wrote that test and forget about it. So kind of the three things with competency based assessment is that we are giving you chances to try again. Uh, and there is actually no penalty for earlier mistakes and we're grading you on very specific skills. So the way that we do that. Oh, so first I want to address some of these questions here. I've heard that people ask me, so is first year super easy now? No, it is still an engineering program. We are still an accredited engineering program. It's not easier. It's just different. Uh, I've heard people ask, do I need to study? Can I just have unlimited opportunities to just redo tests over and over and over again? No. Uh, another question is, are students prepared for second year? Yes, they definitely are. Uh, and even better so than they were in the previous program. And finally, is this program accredited? Yes, uh, we actually are having an accreditation visit uh, later this fall. Uh, that is a, a yearly regular thing that we, or uh, every four years we do. So if you understand competency-based assessment, it's actually very commonly used in medical programs. And the reason why is they, you don't want a doctor who has memorized all the surgeries, but when they actually go to do it, they have no skills. Um, and that's the similar to how we're, testing engineering is we don't care if you can memorize and cram. We want to see that you can do the things you need to do. And if you need a few tries, that is OK. So the way that it's split up, uh, I'll just go very briefly through this. There's three different types. There's basic knowledge and concepts, basic skills and advanced skills. So on the basic knowledge and concepts, you have unlimited opportunities to improve, but you must do them all well to pass. So unlimited opportunities, but you have to do them all and you have to do them all well. The basic skills, uh, you have at least two tries, maybe four or five, depending on what the learning outcome is. But you have to get a 70% to pass. So we're going to give you multiple tries to reach that threshold of proving that, yes, I really know um, how to do this, this skill. And then the type C, that's just advanced skills. That's just normal grading. You get what you get. And finally, with that, there are no final exams. And that's because you're going to be tested throughout the semester um, versus then one exam that's a high stakes that, you know, like with the unfair exam schedule, if you have them all crammed in, you're not going to necessarily do as well uh, versus um, having multiple opportunities throughout the course to prove that you know how to know how to do all the things you need to know to be an engineer. And uh, so I have one more question here. Uh, with a competency-based assessment. So true or false, students receive an average of their test redos. So I will just wait for students to answer that question. So with um, 
the competency-based assessment, when you redo your test, we only care about your most recent grades. So if you stumbled early in the semester, but you can prove towards the end that you can do that task or do that equation, that's what we care about. We don't care about your earlier mistakes. So we've redone this all to adapt for student diversity. So we have the summer top-ups that maybe if you came from a high school that didn't have a very strong math program, that is okay. We're here to help and support you. Um, we also have tutorials. So we have um, tutorials at the end of the day. We have the first year support staff and we have fall and winter top-ups. Uh, and the top-ups are chances for you to redo your tests and uh, do catch-up assignments. And we've done this all because more than one type of person can become an engineer. So the last question that I'm going to ask you guys is what word do you associate with engineering? So some words that we um, kind of look at when we are trying to describe who is an engineer or who should become an engineer. Some of the important things is being an innovator. Uh, so engineers help design the world, they help build the world, and they're the ones that are uh, solving problems. Uh, here, a problem solver. So they work on things like sustainable energy um, and helping solve climate change problems um, and helping literally build the future. They're designers. Um, I think it's very obvious in civil engineering that they design build uh, buildings and bridges, but even a computer engineer, they design um, hardware. They explore. Uh, so, you know, like with technology, it's rapidly changing. There's so many things that we can discover and learn. So finally, to wrap up, there is a place for you in engineering. If you have any questions um, about anything we talked about or any questions I wasn't able to answer in this presentation, please come talk to us in the College of Engineering booth. Uh, we have a team of staff that are ready to help you and answer any questions. So finally, uh, just the words that you guys associated with engineering. So I see uh, math, I see problem solver, hands-on, complex, uh, precision, development, systems, innovator, hard hats, design, creativity, um, development, engaging, systems, everywhere. I like that one. That's a really good, um, really good idea because engineering is literally everywhere. All right, so thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to our engineering presentation. Uh, and just come chat with us in the booth. We'd be happy to talk to you uh, and answer any questions you have. So with that, I will pass it off. Uh, and we will have another presentation again at 2.30. So thank you so much. Uh, and come chat with us. Bye-bye.
Hello, everyone. Oh, it looks like I have a bit of an echo there. Hello, everyone. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. All right, is that working now? All right, so I'm going to get started. All right, so I'm just having a little bit of technical difficulty. Sorry about that. everyone uh, I just have to restart my browser for the uh, presentation to work but it looks like uh, the technical difficulties are all figured out now so I'm gonna share my screen again and hopefully this will work much better all right so take two I'm here to talk to you guys about engineering so before we begin I have a little trivia game so if you could scan this QR code 
Uh, and then I can, uh, I have a few questions throughout the presentation that I'm going to ask you guys. And then it also just helps me to get a little bit of feedback. I'm just going to leave this QR code up for a little bit longer. And if you don't have a phone, you can put that link uh, into your browser. So it's ahaslides.com slash engineer SK. Um, and then I'm going to just jump into the presentation. All right, so I have the QR code at the top there uh, so that if you missed it, you can still scan it. So I'm going to talk to you guys mostly about our re-engineered first year. So what I'm hoping to see is where are you guys from? So if you could type on your phones uh, where you're tuning in from, I'd be happy to see. So I am here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, actually not too far from our uh, new SAS campus in the College of Engineering. So the re-engineered first year is probably, uh, you're kind of curious about what the heck this is uh, and what we're talking about. So I'm sure you've heard that there are no finals, uh, modular courses, chances to try again. Um, and you're probably wondering, uh, what does this all mean? So these are kind of the five key points that I'm going to talk about today. Um, but mostly what we've done is we've tried to rebuild engineering for your success, wellness and learning. So we're really here to support you and we want to help you be a successful engineer. So in the chat here, I can see that we have students from uh, Manitoba, Yorkton, Saskatchewan, Humboldt, South Africa. It's awesome to see uh, lots of different students turning in from lots of different places. So um, my next question is out of these five things, which do you find the most exciting? Uh, what are you most excited to experience in your first year engineering program? So we've reimagined first year, um, and this is the only program of its type in Canada. You're not going to find anything else quite like it. So we've redesigned engineering for student success. So we've made it way more balanced. We've made it hands-on and a lot more thorough. So now back to the, uh, the poll that I had up there. So it looks like 50% of you guys are the most excited about the no finals. Next is hands-on learning, uh, modular courses, and chances to try again. And yes, uh, going through an undergrad, I think no finals is definitely the most exciting part. So my next question for you guys is, have you ever taken a modular course before? Or do you even know what that is? So modular courses are very short, focused, intensive courses. Uh, so they can be only one or two weeks long. Um, and some of the modular courses are the whole term. Uh, and they vary in different lengths and intensity. So it looks like half of you guys are asking, well, what even is a modular course? Uh, and a few of you guys have never taken one. So this is what a traditional schedule looks like. Uh, so you have your five or six classes. They're all completely independent of each other. Uh, and you all have the midterms in October and then your final exams in December. But this is what a re-engineered schedule looks like. So you can see that computer science is really heavy. Uh, it's a very uh, short and intensive course you take in the beginning. And then, for example, communications is a much lighter course that runs uh, for a lot of the degree or a lot of the first year semester. Uh, and then it's uh, lots of other courses that kind of uh, have different uh, intensity and in how long they last. And if that program looked a little too heavy for you, we also have the half speed option. So this you'd be taking half the amount of courses. Uh, so you'd spread out your first year program uh, across two years. So you would just be taking natural sciences, math, uh, and chemistry. So we have another cool thing called just-in-time learning. So what this is, is we've tried to weave all the courses um, to kind of almost be one giant course versus a bunch of independent courses. So for example, your computer science course, all those kind of theories and knowledge that you're learning, you're going to use all of that in your electrical circuits course. And then at the same time, the different formulas and things you're learning in math, you're going to directly use those in electrical circuits. So we also have a first year teaching team. So I have another question uh, to ask you guys is what did you find or what do you find the most challenging about high school? Um, so the first year teaching team, uh, we're calling them almost like the, the dream team of professors. They're our best uh, teachers that we have in engineering that we want to make sure that you guys get to um, have them as your profs. So what they're trying to do is make sure that you have coordinated assignments. So they're not all happening on the same day. Uh, so coordinate a curriculum, 
So like we, I just showed you with a just-in-time learning and then also a balanced exam schedule. So it looks like 81% of you guys say that assignments all happening at the same time is what you find really challenging. So we're trying to alleviate that with our first year program to try to make it a little bit more spread out and even. So we also have a predictable schedule. So with this, we have common breaks, time for friends, and uh, you can do extracurricular. So in, the, uh, in your phones here, I've asked you a question, which engineering student group would you join? So we've tried to make it so that it's a little bit easier to join um, the design teams or the student clubs. The one in the picture here is the USASC Aero design team. And they actually design, uh, build, and compete with an airplane that they build. So it looks like the most popular one is the USASC Aero design team. Uh, so in this photo here, Engineers Without Borders is another really cool one. Uh, Husky Formula Racing, uh, it looks like it's our uh, second most popular the Engineering Student Society. So yeah, so there's lots of different things that you can join um, and I would highly recommend getting involved. Uh, it makes your program a whole lot more rich when you can do that. So this is what the uh, first year schedule looks like. So everyone starts at 8.30, everyone has a common lunch break, uh, you have an afternoon break, and then there's a optional tutorial at the end of the day. So if you need help with your homework, um, there's gonna be tutors available that they can help you out or you can just study with friends. And so these common breaks are designed that you can um, join a student group and work on your student clubs. You can study with friends, go to the gym, uh, lots of different great things. So along with all the changes uh, to kind of the program structure, we've also introduced a brand new curriculum. And what we've tried to do with the curriculum is make it a lot more relevant. So there's um, the courses you're taking are really focused on your knowledge, your skills, they're comprehensive. And we've also tried to uh, help your transition into engineering. So a lot of students find that uh, the jump from high school into university can be quite tricky. So one of the things that we've done to try to help that is we have summer top-ups. So if you, let's say, um, you know, you maybe didn't have the best math program in your high school, uh, we're gonna have a little prep course in the summer to help get you up to speed um, or even just refresh if it's been a while. Uh, in the very beginning of engineering, you're gonna take this course called uh, Introduction to Engineering, where we're gonna teach you life and study skills, mental health and wellness, intro to your teaching, indigenous people's history, and review of science and research in engineering. So these are all just to help transition you uh, to become an engineering student. And we also have a lot more focus on the engineering majors. So uh, with a lot of programs, when you enter engineering, you're expected to know exactly what major you wanna do, what you wanna do with the rest of your life, and what kind of job you wanna have which of course a lot of people don't know that. So what we've done is instead of final exams in the fall term, our students are going to, going to get to do a discipline experience. So you can um, do a one day um, immersion in the different majors that you're interested in to help, help you choose which is the best fit for you. And then we're also in the spring term, we have a major bridge course. So that's gonna be a, um, a hands-on design project in the major that you choose. So I asked you, do you know what major you want? And it looks like 71% of you guys are, there's a few majors that you're interested, you're not really sure. 14% uh, um, have no clue and another 14% know exactly what they wanna do. So that's great. That looks like a lot of you guys would really benefit uh, from getting to experience the different majors that you're interested in. So you can see here, uh, the major experience is happening uh, in December into the final exams. And that's all you're gonna do is just take those uh, really fun major experience courses. So here's a list of the different engineering majors. We have chemical engineering, civil, computer, electrical, engineering, physics, uh, environmental engineering, geological engineering, mechanical engineering. You can also see all of the different um, options that you have within these majors. So there's a lots of different way uh, for you to specialize and see what you wanna uh, kind of specialize and make the program yourself. Uh, and then there's also two different certificates. So you can do a certificate in professional communications. Uh, so this is maybe if you wanna be a leader someday, it helps you learn persuasion and presenting skills. Uh, and then also there's a certificate in technological innovation. Uh, so this is maybe if you wanna be an entrepreneur or a business owner someday, the, you'll get to learn lots of different um, business skills at the Edward School of Business. And so you also get to do the design project in bridge course I was talking about earlier. So this is to help transition you into your second year. 
Um, and it really just focuses you into your discipline uh, and you get to do a design project, which is pretty cool. So you can see this here in April. So this is again, instead of doing final exams, our students get to do a really fun hands-on design course, which is really cool. So another thing that we've introduced with this first year curriculum is we wanna make you more employable after your first year. So we've introduced, uh, you get to learn a programming language, uh, you get to know basic CPR, WMIS, uh, design, CAD, project management. And with this, we wanna make sure that you guys can go on co-op. So I have uh, in the chat, what do you think the average annual wage for a co-op student is? So it looks like 50% of you guys think it is $50,000 a year. And the answer is correct. In 2020, the average salary was $50,000, which I think is crazy for a co-op student. It's pretty awesome. And that's the average. So some students will even make more than that. Uh, you can do between four, eight, 12, and 16 month work options. Uh, so uh, it's a very flexible program. You can fit it in the way you want to into your degree. Uh, you can go in January, May, or September. And with this, you can actually stack um, co-ops. So let's say you could do one four month placement in the summer after your second year. And then maybe after your third year, you want to do another co-op program uh, for maybe 16 months. So maybe you want to go for a year and a half. Uh, so lots of different options um, for you to get lots of work experience, build that resume, pay off student loans. Um, it's a really great opportunity. And also just to kind of see what kind of job you want after you graduate. So we've also refocused to help students succeed. And with that, the biggest change is how our grading system works. So now we use this thing called competency-based assessment. So I have another question for you guys. Do students get chances to try again uh, in our new grading system? And the answer is true. So 100% of you guys got that right. So I've had a lot of people ask me, now what the heck is this thing called competency-based assessment? How are you giving students chances to try again? And really what it all boils down to is we are testing your skills, not your memorization. So these are kind of the three fundamental aspects of competency-based assessment is number one, you get chances to try again. And with that, there's no penalty for earlier mistakes. So let's say um, you really struggled in maybe your math course in the beginning, but by the end, you really understand it uh, and you're, you're really great at it. Those earlier grades that maybe aren't so great, we won't look at them, we'll only look at your most recent grading. We're also grading you on very specific skills. So this is what I've heard from the students that are taking the re-engineer program right now that they like the most about it, is they know exactly what they need to do to get the grades they want. There's no surprises on tests. We spell it out for you what you have to do to get the grades that you want. So I've heard people ask me, so is engineering super easy now? I don't need to study. Are students prepared for second year? Is this program even accredited? And to answer these questions, uh, no, engineering is not super easy now. It's just different. Um, I've also heard, do I need to study? Yes, you definitely need to study. Um, we're just gonna tell you how you need to study and how you need to get the grades you wanna get. I've also heard our students prepared. Yes, um, one of the big changes we've had is that major bridge course. Uh, so you can um, kind of jump into your major even before you start. And yes, our program is accredited so you can become a licensed professional engineer. So with the competency-based assessment, it's kind of confusing, but just to kind of quickly run through it, there's three different types of uh, ways that we grade you. So type A is basic knowledge and concepts. And with these, you actually get unlimited opportunities to improve, but you must successfully complete them all to pass. So you have to do really, really great in all of the super basic stuff, but we're gonna give you unlimited tries. The type B um, is going to be uh, at least two tries, maybe four or five, but you need to be a little higher on these. You need to get a 70% uh, in order to pass your courses. And then the type C is just normal grading. So you get what you get um, and you have just traditional grading. All right, so I see a question in the comments is how is second year different from first year? So second year uh, is going to be a traditional system. So normal grading but our uh, faculty are looking into um, how to incorporate the, the changes we've made the first year into the upper years. So the plan is someday eventually to redesign the whole college, but we've just started with the first year. So 
your second year would be much uh, very similar to how you're graded in high school right now. All right, so uh, I have a few more questions here. Uh, so another one on your phone you can answer is true or false. Research has shown that short-term memorization is the best way to assess learning. So I'll give you guys a few moments to answer that question. So another thing we've changed, there are no final exams. So instead of a huge, high-stakes, stressful exam, um, you're going to be graded throughout your module. Uh, so I'm sure that you've experienced this, that sometimes, you know, in the class, you really understood the material, but in the, the time the final exam comes, maybe you have a whole bunch of exams all at the same time, you don't do as well. Um, and that's not really a very fair way to assess how much you actually know. So your grades are gonna be uh, throughout the semester um, and to prove that you know the things you need to know to become an engineer. All right, and it looks like 85% of you say false. And exactly, short-term memorization is not a very good way to prove that you actually know things. I know I've written tests where I crammed the night before and then next day after I wrote the exam, I don't remember any of it. So that's why we've uh, gotten rid of final exams because they really don't actually test how well you know things. So we've also rebalanced for student diversity. All right, so I just have one more uh, question in the chat here uh, just about the competency-based assessment. So back to the diversity, we've really tried to make it more fair. So for example, we have the summer top ops that maybe it's been a while since you took chemistry. We have a little prep course that you can take during the summer in chemistry, uh, just so that when you start, you can, you're up to speed um, and everyone's on a, a fair playing field. And a few other ways that we're helping students succeed. We have the end of day tutorials. Um, so if you need help with your homework, you can talk to a teaching assistant. Uh, we have first year support staff. So it's a whole team of people, even advisors, uh, the professors that are all here to support you. And then the fall and winter top-ups, those are your chances to redo your tests and assignments. And we're doing this because more than one type of person can become an engineer. So the final thing that I have in the chat here is what word do you associate with engineering? What do you think engineering is all about? So some words that we associate with engineering is an innovator. So engineers help build the world. They help change the world. Uh, they do everything from innovating um, uh, prosthetic legs to building bridges to designing computer systems. Engineers are problem solvers. Uh, they help solve climate change. They help uh, build a better, more sustainable world. They're designers. I think it's very obvious, you know, if you look at a city, an engineer had their touch on almost every part of that city. Uh, they're also explorers. Uh, so if you think of all the technology that hasn't been discovered yet, um, all the different things that we're able to do in this world that we don't even know yet, those are engineers that help solve those problems and help build the world. So if I'm looking at the words that you guys associate with engineering, I see building, ambitious, designer, driven, problem solver, technology, creative, ambitious. Uh, those are really great words. Um, and also, yeah, that's who engineers are. It's not just... Um, math and physics. Uh, it's a really exciting and dynamic career. So uh, in conclusion, we've made all of these changes to help you become an engineer because there's a place for you in engineering. Um, engineering is not just meant for one type of person. It's lots of different people that engineering needs. So thank you so, so much to everyone who joined my presentation today. Uh, if you have any questions about anything you saw in the presentation, make sure to come talk to us in the College of Engineering uh, booth and we'd be happy to chat with you. So thank you so much, everyone. I hope you have a fantastic day.
Hello, everyone, and welcome to our final engineering presentation of the day. I'm so happy that you guys can join me. So to begin, I'm going to share my screen so you can see my presentation. All right, so today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the College of Engineering and specifically our re-engineered first year program. But to start, I'm going to kick it off with a little trivia game. So if you have your phones ready, I have a QR code. So you can scan this QR code to be joined uh, into the game. I'm going to have questions throughout the presentation. Uh, or if you don't have your phone with you, you can type that uh, link into your browser uh, to be joined uh, into our trivia game. Um, and then throughout the presentation, if you miss the QR code, I'm going to have it at the top of the slides so that you can uh, join in. So I'll give everyone a few minutes uh, just to join in. So today we're going to be talking about our re-engineered first year program. So again, if you miss that slide, you can just still scan the, the QR code in the top corner to join the game. So what I'm curious to see is where are you guys tuning in from? So I am here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, actually not too far from our university campus. So I'm sure you've heard all about the re-engineer first year program, or maybe you're just here because you saw the no final exams and you wanted to see, well, how the heck does engineering not have final exams? So these are kind of the five key things that I'm going to talk about throughout my presentation. Um, and we've really re-engineered first year for your success. So we want, we want you to be uh, successful in your program. We really care about your wellness and your learning. And so that's really why we re-engineered first year uh, was for you. So I'm just going to pop over to the uh, trivia over here. So it looks like uh, most of the students are joining us from Saskatoon. Uh, so I am here in Silver Spring. Uh, I'm not sure where you guys are tuning in from Saskatoon. Uh, we have students from Regina. Uh, we have uh, Lloyd Minister. Uh, great. And other places in Saskatchewan. So it's great to see. So my next question for you guys is... Out of these five things that we've been uh, promoting with the re-engineered first year, which is the one that you find the most exciting? So uh, again, if you are just tuning in now, you can scan the QR code to join into the game. So we've reimagined what a first year program can look like, and it's the only program of its type in Canada. So what we've really done is we've tried to redesign first year for first year for your success. So we've made it more balanced, more hands-on, and a lot more thorough. So I'm uh, looking over at what you guys are answering. So it looks like hands-on learning is what you guys find the most exciting. So it's great if you're interested in engineering because it's a very, very hands-on program with lots of uh, labs and different cool things that you can do. So it looks like 62% of you find that the most exciting. No finals, 25% and chances to try again. So we also have this thing called modular courses. So I have a, another question for you guys is, have you ever taken a modular course or do you even know what they are? So a modular course are very short, focused, intensive courses uh, that vary in length. So I have a picture here of what a traditional schedule looks like. So you can see that there's the five or six classes, your midterms in October, uh, and then your final exams in December. And each of the classes is independent of each other, they have the same length and the same amount of hours you're in that class each day. So it looks like 71% of you are saying, well, what even is a modular course? This is what modular courses look like. It's a little confusing. So you can see that, for example, computer science uh, is taking up a lot of your time in September, uh, but it's very short. So right now the students have actually already written uh, their modular tests. They're all done computer science. Uh, you can see that natural sciences goes throughout the semester. Communications is just a really uh, small course. Uh, so it's really great uh, with this program that uh, we can kind of layer it the way that is best for your learning. And with that, um, so this is the half speed option. So if this program looked a little heavy and a little intense for you, maybe the half speed option is, is the best option for you. Uh, so this is maybe if you want to work while you're in school or do sports um, or just make sure that you're successful in your courses. Uh, this will spread out your first year 
uh, into two different years. So the courses that are highlighted in green are going to be your first year of the reengineered, uh, and then all the courses in gray will be your second year. So it looks like half of you guys have said, what is a modular course? And 50% of you have never taken a modular course. So we also have this thing called just-in-time learning. Um, and this is a really cool way that your courses are not independent courses of each other. All of your course content weaves together um, to kind of tell the picture of what an engineer does and the important things you need to know. So for example, uh, you can see this computer science here is really heavy uh, in, your, in the very beginning of your program. You're taking a lot of computer science. Um, but then when it's over, those, the different knowledge that you learn, the programming skills, you're going to use them immediately in electrical circuits. And then at the same time, all the different things you're learning in math, we're going to show you why those formulas are important and how you can reuse them in a real world setting. So it's a really great way to make your course content a lot more relevant. Uh, I know when I took calculus back in high school, it seemed really abstract and kind of useless. Uh, we don't want that. We want to show you why uh, math is important, why science is important uh, in your other courses. So another big thing we have is a first year teaching team. So I have another question you can answer on your phones. What did you find the most challenging about high school? So with our first year, we have coordinated assignments. We have a coordinated curriculum and a balanced exam schedule. So we're calling them the dream team of engineering. Uh, and it's a group of professors that are teaching uh, the first year together, um, almost as like one giant course. So it looks like from high school, 50% uh, of you say the hardest thing is assignments all happening at the same time. And another 50% say courses pulling you in a million different directions. Uh, I definitely relate to that. I know what it feels like. Uh, and we're trying to not have that happen to you in your first year. So another thing we've tried to implement with this first year uh, program is a predictable schedule. So I have another question for you guys. Um, which student group would you join? So one of the big things with this first year program is we want you guys to be able to get involved. So we have common breaks, uh, which make time for friends or time to join a student club. Uh, the picture you see here is the aero design team and they actually design, build and compete with an airplane that they build. So it looks like you guys are interested equally in Husky Formula Racing, Steel Bridge Team and USAS Aero Design Team. Oh, and USAS Space Design Team. Uh, USAS Space Design Team is actually going to be launching a satellite uh, into space. It's going to be the first Saskatchewan satellite launch. Um, and since they're launching it this year, the, the club will be starting up again. So if you're in first year, it's a great time to join. You can join right from the ground up and helping uh, potentially build a satellite uh, or a Mars rover. So another big thing we have uh, with that is the balanced timetable. So you can see that everyone starts at 8.30. Uh, you have your common lunch break, uh, your afternoon classes, and then another break and a tutorial at the end of the day. So the way that the previous engineering schedule worked is there's lots of uh, night labs. Um, your schedule would be all over the place. It'd be different every day. And we're just trying to give you guys a better school life balance. Uh, so you have a common lunch break. You can go to the gym, join a student club, study with your friends. Uh, and there's also an optional tutorial if you need help with your homework. So another huge thing, aside from changing the structure of the program, we've also completely redid the curriculum. And what we're really trying to do with the curriculum is make it a lot more relevant, um, relevant to you becoming a licensed professional engineer someday. And that starts with your transition to first year engineering. So a lot of students struggle. Um, high school and university are very different. And so we've, we're trying to make that transition as smooth as possible. So we have summer top ups. Uh, so these will be um, uh, little prep courses that you can take in August to help get you prepared for university to refresh your high school courses. This is great maybe if you um, maybe didn't have a great math program in your high school, just so that you're confident that uh, you're where you need to be in your math skills. Uh, or maybe if you took chemistry a long time ago, uh, you can get freshened up before you start. Um, there's also life and study skills we're going to teach you, mental health and wellness, intro to peer teaching, indigenous people's history, and review of science and research and engineering. So this will be your first, first few weeks of engineering will just be focused on helping you transition. Another thing we have uh, is more focus on the engineering majors. So I have another question here is, do you guys 
know what uh, major you want to choose. So with a lot of other engineering programs, uh, you're just expected to know what you want to do. Uh, you're just expected to know what you want to do with the rest of your life, what career you want. Uh, and we know that a lot of students don't know what they want to do. And they don't know really what exactly does a computer engineer do, does, or what even is engineering physics. So what we have done uh, is instead of the fall exam period, uh, our students are going to get to do a discipline immersion. So you're going to get to experience the different majors that you're interested in, see what's a good fit for you, where your interests lie, where your skills are, before you actually have to choose uh, your major. Uh, and then in the springtime, we're going to have a major bridge course. So those are going to be a hands-on design project uh, in the major you choose, and this will help transition you into your second year. So it looks like 88% of you say there's a couple majors you're interested in. Um, great, 0% say help. Can I experience all the majors? You have no, no clue. Uh, and 11% say yes, I know exactly what I want to do. All right, so you can see here uh, in this picture here, uh, in December will be the major experience course. So you're, that's all you're doing in December. It's a great way to lead into the holiday season. Um, by just taking these uh, hands-on uh, major experiences. So here's a list of all the different majors we offer at USASC Engineering. We have chemical engineering, civil, computer, electrical, engineering physics, environmental engineering, geological engineering, and mechanical engineering. And you can see that there are a bunch of different options in all of the majors. Uh, so you can kind of make it your own and uh, lead on your interests. And then at the bottom here, these are the two different certificates that we offer through our school uh, professional development. So there's a certificate in professional communication. And this is really great if you want to be maybe a leader someday. Uh, it'll teach you how to present, teach you communication skills, persuasion. Um, and then the certificate in technological innovation is great if you want to be a business owner or an entrepreneur. So you get to take classes with the Edwards School of Business uh, to help, uh, help you be a business person as well as an engineer. So like I said before, uh, there's also the design project in Bridge Course. So this is after you choose your major, uh, you'll get to do a design project in the major, in the major that you chose. Now, and it helps transition you into your second year. So you can see here in April, this is when you'd be doing your design project. So all of April, all you're doing is really focusing on your major and doing a design project in your major. So another thing with our curriculum changes, our goal is to make you even more employable after your first year. So you're going to have um, computer programming language, you're going to have basic first aid, CPR, and WMIS, design, and CAD, and foundations in project management. And with making you more employable, we really want to make sure that you guys go on co-op. It's a great opportunity. So I have a question in the chat here. What do you think the average wage for our co-op students is? Uh, so it looks like most of you think it is $35,000 a year. And actually, it's $50,000 is the average wage of a co-op student in 2020. And that's the average. So some students make even more than $50,000 as a student. Uh, so with a co-op program, uh, you apply into a co-op program. Uh, and you can go for 4, 8, 12, or 16-month work terms. And it's very flexible. So you can go in January or May, September. And you can actually stack these. So let's say you could do uh, one co-op uh, in the summer with one uh, employer. You could then do another co-op maybe after your third year with a different employer. So this is just a great way to help build your resume, build your skills, see what kind of uh, jobs you like to work, um, and help figure out kind of where your career, where, where you want your career to take you. So we have also redesigned uh, the way that we grade students to help them succeed. And what we're using now is competency-based assessment. So I have another question. Is true or false? Students get chances to try again. All right, and it's true. Students do get chances to try again. And I've had a lot of people ask me, now what the heck is competency-based assessment? Essentially, it's just testing your skills and not your memorization. So kind of the three kind of fundamental parts of um, competency-based assessment 
uh, is you get chances to try again. And there's not penalty for earlier mistakes. So what this means, uh, maybe in your chemistry class, uh, maybe you really struggled and you didn't understand the, the course material in the beginning, but maybe by the end, you get it. You, you've mastered it, you understand it. Your second uh, try maybe will be your grades for that course. If you stumble in the beginning and you're able to redeem yourself, that's the grade that we're gonna look at. We're also grading you on specific skills. So I think this is the, uh, so the re-engineered program was launched this past fall. This is the one that I've heard that students really like about the first year program is this right here, that there's no guessing uh, what you're gonna be graded on. There's no surprises on the exams. We spell it out for you exactly what you need to do to get the grades you want. Um, and you can do that because we tell you exactly what you need to do and we're, you're graded on those very specific skills. All right, so I have another question here is, research has shown that short-term memorization is the best way to assess learning. And yeah, that's false. I'm sure you're like me, you've crammed the night before an exam, you wrote it and forgot everything that you just memorized. So that's why we grade you on skills rather than on memorization. So I've had a lot of people ask me, is first year super easy now? Do I even need to study? Are students prepared for second year? And how is this program accredited? And my answer is no, engineering is not super easy now. Uh, it's still an engineering program. What we've done is we've just made it, uh, you're more supported in your program. There's chances to try again. Um, there's no high stakes final exams. And so it's just different now. Uh, do I need to study? Yes, you definitely need to study. Uh, are students prepared for second year? Yes, I would say even more so than the previous program um, because we're making sure that you understand the things you need to know versus just skimming by on uh, cramming the night before memorization. And yes, our program is accredited so you can become a licensed professional engineer after you graduate. All right, so this is kind of how competency-based assessment works. I'm not gonna get uh, too much into this, but there's three different types of things that we're grading you on. There's basic knowledge. And with this, you get unlimited opportunities to improve, but you must su successfully complete these to pass. So basically you need to really understand the basic stuff and you need to be able to do it really, really well. And then the type B, these are the basic skills. You'll have two, three, four, five tries maybe uh, to do the basic skills, but you need a 70% to pass. So uh, we're giving you more tries, but the bar is set a little higher on these. It's not a 50% like a lot of other courses. You need 70% in these. And then the type C. So this is just traditional grading. So this is if you're a, a really awesome student and you want to set yourself apart, uh, the advanced skills is how you'll uh, showcase your knowledge. And the best part of all with a competency-based assessment is there are no final exams. And the reason why is because you're gonna be tested throughout the module versus one big high stakes exam at the end. And it actually does test your knowledge better. I'm sure uh, you're like me and you've had a, a course where you did really well throughout the course, but then your final exams, you had a whole bunch at the same time you didn't do as well as you wanted, but you really did understand the course material. So that's why we're not doing final exams because they're really a lot more based on memorization versus your actual skills. All right, and I just have one final question is students receive an average um, of their test redos. So all of this, we're trying to rebalance for student diversity. We have put a lot of supports in place to help you succeed. So we have the summer top ops. So these are prep courses you're gonna take in August uh, and you'll take them in calculus and physics, writing, reading, chemistry, indigenous people's histories. And these are just to help make sure that you're up to speed when you start engineering um, and maybe if you forgot a lot of things uh, over the summer that you're ready to go and, and ready to start engineering. We have end of day tutorials. Uh, so these are if you need help with your homework. We have uh, uh, tutors every single day to help you. We have first year support staff. Uh, so our advisors that are just for first year. We have a team of teachers that are there to help you. And then the fall and the winter top ups are chances that you can redo your test and redo your grades uh, to show you're competent in those skills. And we're doing this all because more than one type of person can become an engineer. So my final question for you guys is what word do you associate with engineering? Uh, I'm gonna show you some words that we associate with engineering. Um, so one word that we associate with engineering is innovator. 
So engineers do things like build prosthetics. They uh, discover new technologies. They um, help build the world. So they do a lot of innovating. Uh, problem solvers. So engineers help uh, find solutions to climate change, um, help build sustainable energy. Engineers help uh, solve technology problems and environmental problems. Engineers are designers. So this is really easy to see uh, in any city. Um, engineers had their touch in every part of that, from the roads to the building, uh, to the water systems. Um, and then finally, engineers are explorers. So if you think of a lot of the new, um, all of the technologies that have been discovered throughout the years, um, all of the, the ways that uh, people have helped build the world and shape the world, engineers had a part in that and they help uh, explore the next, uh, the next uh, technology that's going to be discovered and engineer was there helping. So I'm just looking to what you guys are saying. Problem solving, creator, uh, innovator, creativity. So yeah, that's great. That's really what engineering is about. It's not just math and physics. Uh, engineers do a lot of really cool stuff. So finally, there's a place for you in engineering. Um, engineers are not just one type of person and we've redesigned the program uh, so that you can become a professional engineer. So thank you so, so much for coming. I hope I was able to answer some of your questions. Uh, our colleagues will be in the booth until four to help answer any questions. So if we weren't able to address any of your questions, we'll be there ready to talk to you. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you.